So as we get started today, this video is divided into chapters. If you wanna skip at any point, just a look at the sliding bar underneath the plating window and you can see the chapters to skip ahead. Welcome back to the Crochet Cradles with my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today we have the Blue Waves Crochet Blanket. Now before you click off on this, I want to let you know right off the bat that this requires color play. So if you still have your Karen Anniversary Cakes, this pattern is actually working out in the cakes but instead of letting the colors just flow out of the ball the way that they're supposed to, this is actually being manipulated so that you have the solid stripes. So let's take a look at the Karen uh, Anniversary Cake and let's talk about what's happening in this blanket. So here's what the big ball looks like and you know that you have several colors that are working inside this ball. So this is bigger than a human head. So what we have here is that the way that this pattern has been done is that each one of the striping that you see is actually using the solid color that has been provided. So for example, if I want to use this particular one here, I would use that and if I need more, the color will appear here and then will appear here and etc. The way that this thing is working is that once you have the striping done, you literally cut the yarn and you move to the next stripe. And again, using that same color. So what we have here, the, the, the advantage to this is that instead of buying five different balls, you have actually five colors all work, worked in, in this one here. So whatever is left over of this color, then you'll carry it and you'll start it again uh, with the remaining of this color and then pick up onto the next and etc. etc. So this particular project is using two balls of Karen Anniversary Cakes and it's being manipulated by the color. So you wanna change the color uh, st uh, strategically. Now if you don't wanna bother to do that kind of effort, it will look different and it will not be as solid as this but the transition can happen anywhere that it wants to be. So this is all about color play. This is actually really a popular concept. You're gonna see more and more of this coming out because crocheters and knitters want the opportunity to have all the colors but also manipulate where they're going to be in the project instead of just letting it uh, just come out of the ball as is. So that's what's happening in today's project. So back to the pattern we go and on page number two there is a diagram that is available to show you how to do this and we're gonna cover this. And also if you'd like to change the, uh, the size of this, be very conscientious though. If you are gonna change the size, it will change the quantity that you will need and that this blanket is based on using two Karen Anniversary Cakes and so that you can end up with the colors just like you see it here. So it's a multiples of 10 plus two chains at the end. So you will crochet uh, ten, uh, 10 chains. So 10, 10, 10, 10, 10 and when you're happy with it you can add a two. But if you change it more than 112, just be conscious that you may have a problem with actually trying to get two balls to work into this project. So you may need three. That's all I'm saying. So we're gonna begin our today and uh, so as soon as a yarn color runs out, so keep the, the coloring consistent if you would like that and just being able to begin. So let's take a look at the diagram on page number two. So we're looking at the diagram on page number two. We're gonna just start off with the foundation row and we're gonna come all the way back and then we're going to begin this play. So we're gonna be uh, manipulating between singles, halves, doubles, and halves and singles and then eventually what's gonna happen is that in row number three you can see that it's jumping down and going around it so that it's creating that uh, um, texture just like you see in between each one of the waves. So without further ado we're going to go through this pattern. I'm gonna take you through the complete repeat and I'm going to be using a um, Bernat Softy Chunky Yarn as demonstration yarn today. Um, I have a full ball of Karen Anniversary Cakes and I have something special in mind with it. So I'm just gonna demonstrate with my scrap yarn that I have on hand today. So let's grab an eight millimeter size L crochet hook and let's play. As we begin today, if you'd like to change the yarn or the hook size, you can do so. Just be conscious that it will change the, the width if you're doing that. But if you're chaining in your multiples of 10 and then adding two at the end, then you can go as big as you need to go. So what I'm saying is that this pattern will work if you're manipulating the yarn or the hook size. Let's begin and I'm going to create a slip knot and we wanna do the foundation row. So you can either chain 112 if you're using the Karen Anniversary Cakes but if you'd like to change the size, in my case I'm just doing a swatch, I'm going to chain in multiples of 10. So either chain 112 or multiples of 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. So decide what you wanna do and meet me back here in just a moment. So I'm doing a small swatch with you. So I am deciding if it's long enough, yes or no. In my case it will because I'm just doing a swatch. So I did 10, 10 and 10 and so at the end of that I just have to add 
two more stitches in order to have that. So it's 10 plus 2. So I'm just making sure it's a 1 and 2. So multiple is a 10 plus 2 or 112. Now we're going to go across on the foundation row and let's begin that and we're gonna go second chain from the hook staying on the back hump of the chain and I want you to single crochet across the entire chain to go all the way back for the foundation. So please do that and meet me back here in just a moment. Now that I went all the way across I've already turned around and I'm ready for row number one. Row one through eight is the repeat pattern but you should know that there is color play involved with this particular idea. So this is considered one of the four rows for this color. So every color will just be four rows and you wanna keep your yarn color the same for those four rows. So if you have to dig into your ball to get extra yarn or you'll have yarn left over um, for that you'll use it again the next time the color comes up on it. And remember that there is five colors when it comes to the Karen Anniversary Cakes. So we're going to begin in row number one. You'll chain one and you'll single crochet into the first two stitches. So one and two. The next stitch you will do a half double crochet and then what we have is the next five stitches will be double crochet. So we'll count those in together. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. And then we have to get smaller again so we're just making these waves. So we're gonna do one half double crochet to get smaller. And then what we're going to do is single crochet in the next. So that's one wave that, you, that you're seeing here. So to start again you're going to chain one, skip the next one and single crochet in the next. And we're gonna use this space in the future and you'll see what we'll do with that. So one half or one single crochet gets us started. A half double crochet gets us bigger just for one stitch and then we have five double crochets again. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. And then we're gonna get smaller for one so that's half double crochet and then a single crochet. And then that's another wave that's completed. So to move on, chain one, skip the next one and you'll keep doing what you just learned all the way across. So we'll just do the final here. So I skipped one, single crochet into the next, half double crochet to get bigger and then five double crochets. So we have one, two, three, four and five and because it's the ending it's slightly different than the than the rest of it. Sorry that should have been a double crochet. So it's gonna be slightly different so you're gonna just go half double crochet for the next and then the last two stitches here will be one single crochet each. And that was gonna be concluding us then for row number one and so it will look like this. Let's turn to work and begin row number two. The easiest way to remember row number two is that it's exactly opposite, or it's exactly the same as what's underneath it. So we're going to begin and we're gonna start by chaining one and there's two single crochets underneath here. So we have one and two so they'll each be a single crochet. So do you remember what the next stitch was? It was a half double crochet so it'll stay as a half double crochet and then the next five in a row that you did was double crochet. So if you can identify what the stitches look like it's a lot easier. So we have one, two, three, four and five. So what I'm saying to you is that I just counted that but if you can identify what the stitches look like you probably don't need to. So the next one it's a half double crochet so we're gonna get smaller and then the next one's a single crochet. And like before we skipped over a stitch so we're gonna skip over this chain one again. So we're just gonna chain one to skip over this chain one space and go immediately into the next single crochet. So the next wave is a single crochet that I just did and then it's a half and then five 
double crochet is in a row. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. And then we're gonna get smaller for a half double crochet and then a single crochet and then you're back to that space thing again. So just chain, chain one to jump over that space and come immediately and start your wave. And you'll do these all the way across and then eventually you come to the very end which I'm about to do. So I just did a single crochet so the next one has to be a half and then five doubles so I'll count those. So we have one, two, three, four and five and then one half and at the very final edge there will be two single crochets that are left and you'll do that. And then you'll turn your work and we'll begin row number three. Let's begin. Now row number three is a straight single crochet shot across except for when it comes to being over here and we're gonna do a spiked stitch which is going to go into the space down here. So right where my thumb is moving. So let's begin row number three. So we're gonna begin number three. You're gonna chain up one and you'll just single crochet in each of the stitches and what I wanna pay attention to is slowing down and doing the other stitch that is having the space and we'll get there in a few moments. It's in between each one of the waves. So you'll find this blanket will grow pretty quickly with the size of the hook and the thickness of this yarn. Now we're gonna do it, the next stitch here is the, is the space. So we have to come into this empty stitch right here. So now you have a choice. You can either go into that stitch that is way down here and just put the yarn over top of it and pull through and give it some slack and finish it. You can do that or, and that will be double sided if you do that. If you want it only one sided then what you can do is come into that stitch and stick within the out, a stick within here and then pull through and give it some slack and it'll be still there but it will be missing on the back side. So I recommend to you that the spike stitch that you go all the way through and put this yarn over top and pull up and therefore this blanket will be double sided. So it's just like that. So you'll continue then to single crochet so I'd like to give you some options with what you'd like to do. It's better to have double sided if you can. Then you're not worried about people flipping over your blanket. So I'm not really paying attention to the stitch count. I'm just looking to where those gapping stitches are which is next. So be consistent. So I'm just gonna come down here and pull up and pull up about the same amount of yarn so that it's consistent and then finish it as a single crochet and then continue along. So you're gonna do that all the way across and at the end of this row which is row number three is that this is where you're going to change the color at the end. And so what I, what I recommend is that we finish it off, we hide in the ends and then start with a new color that is on your Karen uh, anniversary cakes. So finish it right to the end and snip your yarn and leave enough so that you can put that into a tapestry needle so you can hide it into the work itself. So let me show you how to do that. To hide this you wanna put it into a tapestry needle. Now some people like to um, weave in their ends through a crochet hook. It'll fall out most likely. So just kind of manipulating it and just go underneath the stitch work for about an inch or so and pull through. And when you pull that through don't change the shape. So don't pull on it so tight that you're changing the edge. So you'll go through once back across twice. This is the second time and a slightly different path the third time and that'll be stuck permanently inside your project until the end of time and then you can snip. And then remember this is where you finish so this is where you'll wanna start your new color. So you grab a new color in the Karen Anniversary Kick. So if you still have this color left over just pull the remaining of it. Just wind it into a little ball. Set it aside and when you need that color again you just start from that little ball first before taking it from the, the big ball. And that's what you're going to do. So let's start with row number four 
next. So row number four you'll want to have your color changing. So I create a slip knot for my hook and I go into the very first stitch. And then I'm just going to pull it through. So I'm going to do what is called as a standing single crochet. It looks nicer. So put it onto the hook and going in and grab it and pull through so that there's two loops left on the hook. Leave the straggler right on top of the line and then pull through the two. And that's a standing single crochet. I want you in row number four, there's no counting involved, just a straight shot of single crochet all the way across. You don't need to jump down. It's just one single crochet in each and I'll see you at the end of this line. And just crochet enough over top of the straggler so that it can be stuck. So I think it's enough. Throw it to the back and then you can snip that later and continue along. So I'll see you at the end of number four. It's a straight shot of single crochet. I'll be right back. So now I just come up to the end of number four. So I'm gonna turn my work and we started before at the beginning of a wave we got bigger and then smaller. So then beginner, uh, beginning bigger and smaller. Four, we're gonna start at a partial wave. So we'll start at the big point, go smaller and then big and go smaller. So it's gonna puzzle in between these waves here. To do that we're going to chain three. So one, two, three. And we want to double crochet the next two in a row. So these two right here. So one and two. And then we're gonna get smaller again. So we're going to uh, conclude the wave. So we'll go smaller for a half double crochet for one. And then a single crochet for the next. And this is where we're going to put the new um, chain one space. So chain one, skip one and then start here the next one after that. So single crochet and you're doing full waves now from this point. So single, the next one will be a half and then five doubles. So we have one, two, three, four and five. And then we're gonna get smaller. So it's a half double crochet for one and then a single crochet and then we gotta create that gap space. So chain one, skip the next one and single crochet in the next to begin a new wave. And you're gonna do this all the way across and the only difference now is that the ending is going to be slightly different because you're doing a partial. So I'm currently right now just doing my five double crochets. So the first row that of these you have to really kinda count and then it's when you're doing the second part of the wave on top is that you can look underneath and know what's going on. So get smaller. So for a half and then a single and then you're gonna create a space. So chain one, create a space. So single and then you're going to go bigger for half and if your counts are right, the last three stitches here will be a double crochet. So we have one, two, and three and that will conclude then row number five. And then you'll turn your work and begin number six. So number six we're just gonna match exactly what we see underneath it and we're just gonna carry and make this way bigger. So we're going to chain three. That's your first double crochet and then the next two and if you can see what's underneath it just follow with what you see. So it's two double crochet in a and then you're gonna get smaller so it'll be a half and then a single and then you'll have a space that you need to jump over. So chain one to jump that space and come immediately into the next one. So a single and get bigger for a half and then five doubles. So we have one, two, three, four and five and then getting smaller for a half and then a single and you should see the space right next which it is. So chain one to jump it and then come immediately in the next one. So we have single, we have a half and then five doubles. So we have one, two, three, four and five and then smaller again and you'll do this all the way across of course and then eventually you come to the other side. So chain one to jump the gap. So on the other side once you get to the edge you'll have a single and then a half and then there should be three doubles left. 
remember that chain three counts as one of them. So we have one, two, and going into the turning chain, go right into the chain work itself, never to a space. And it will appear a little bit more open than the rest of the stitches, but that's normal. And then that was the end of row number six. Let's turn our work, and we'll do one more row, which is the final for this color. And then you have to switch back then for row number eight. So row number seven, remember how we jumped down? We're gonna be doing that again. So we're just looking for these spaces. So to begin, you're just gonna chain one and single crochet in every stitch except for those ones with the space. And those are gonna be your spike stitches that come on down. Okay, so the next one is the spike. So come on down here. So just going on in, pull through, give it a bit of slack, finish it, and then start up again. So just singles. So I'm more looking for the spaces. I'm not counting because I don't need to. So here's a space. So I'm gonna come on down. And so the trick is, is that after you've done this, this row, we need to change the color. So just remember after the last spike that comes down in the rows, you have to change the color in order to keep the waves um, consistent with what the pattern is suggesting. And of course, if you wanna let your colors run in as they are out of the Karen Anniversary Cakes or any other balls that you may be using, that's completely your creative choice. So coming on down and so the very final coming up to the end would then just be one single crochet in the final five stitches that are left. But I wouldn't count them but I just happen to know that. Just remember the turning chain, don't forget that and going in there. So you'll wanna finish this yarn and we still have one more row that's part of the repeat and so I'm gonna finish this, hide it in like I showed you and then we'll begin the final row of the repeat which is row number eight. So we're about to start row number eight. So rows number eight, one, two, and three are the same color and the other color is four, five, six, and seven. So just remember that and you'll see it working out on your thing. So just attach it and do a standing single crochet. So just scoop the yarn so that there's two loops on the hook and then just pull through and that's a standing single and leave this down on top. So row number eight is just a straight shot of single crochets just going all the way back across. It can be any color that is suggested in your, your yarn ball. So you can even change the order of the colors of your Karen Anniversary Cakes as well if you wanna manipulate your colors you can do that and just uh, try to be consistent with using them on an equal basis. So the same amount of these stripes per color will work out for you. So we're just gonna single crochet ourselves across. So this is a nice easy pattern to be able to play with and you'll find the anniversary cakes. The coloring is actually really quite amazing and you will find that um, it'll work out and be very creative for you. So um, you can change the color orders as I mentioned and I think you can have a lot of fun with your creativity on that. So I'm coming to the end of number eight. There is no border to this but if you'd like to add one you could do a single crochet evenly spaced around putting three single crochets in the corners if you would like to do that but this has not been designed to have a border. But of course it's your creativity as I mentioned and that's something that you can decide for yourself. So you can see that it looks pretty neat and this here is almost kind of Harry Potter-ish when I really think about it. And it's a great little pattern and I think you can have a lot of fun with the color play on this. So this is the Blue Waves. <laughs> if you wanna call this uh, sample the Blue Waves, it's the Blue Waves Crochet Blanket with the Karen Anniversary Cakes. I'm your host Mikey of the Crochet Crowd on behalf of Yarnspirations.com. Have a good one. We hope to see you again real soon. Bye-bye.